So we're going to demonstrate a zero-click exploit when using an MCP server with Google Docs, um, using an indirect injection against cursor. So in order to show that here, um, here's a project that we have set up in cursor. And we have it set up with a Google Docs MCP server. So this server here is integrated. And we can see that in the cursor settings. So we go here, the Google Docs um, MCP server is set up. And we can test that out by saying list my documents in Google Drive. And so you can see we have access to the to our Google Docs here. Um, this could be helpful sometimes for developers if you want to reference uh, documentation related to your project or what have you. You might have this um, plugin or something like it integrated. So in order to understand how this uh, attack works, it's good to understand the allow list as well in Cursor. So Cursor lets you uh, run more agentic stuff and have it do that automatically. Um, so we said, um, I'll put the current date in the terminal using the date command. It can trigger um, telling the terminal to do that. Um, but it has the security function in here where you could have it, um, or it, by default, it will ask the user if they want to run the command so that there's a human in the loop. However, you can also use an allow list. So it defaults to asking the user every time. You can also have an allow list where you could say certain stuff is allowed to, to be run without any user interaction. Um, we find that a lot of developers will use this because it's convenient and they don't want to have to be constantly fatigued with um, answering those prompts. So um, let's give a more tangible example. Let's say we told it to run Python code uh, directly at the terminal that outputs hello world. And so it prompts us to run it, but if we add it to the allow list, it'll run it. And then the next time we try running something that has Python, it will not prompt us. So we can see this time it just automatically ran because it's in the allow list. So we can see here in the settings, you can see our allow list of what's allow list. It's, let's add regular Python as well. So that requires minimal user intervention to actually uh, perform the attack. So let's go through the attack. If we have a document in Google Docs, such as this, um, this has an indirect injection that convinces the cursor to perform actions, um, such as running a Python script that we've created. Here is that Python script, and it does a bunch of post exploitation, exfiltration stuff. So it takes the SSH and AWS keys and packages all this up, uploads it to the attacker's controlled server, and also um, does a reverse shell and, and makes that persistent. So if we take that, that document and we share it from the one user's account to our targeted user, and we tell it not to notify, this document will then be accessible by the attacked user in their Google Drive. But then if we look at the targeted user's uh, Google Drive, we go in here, we don't see the document, but if we go to share it with me, that's where the document is. So this user has access to the document and thus their cursor also has access to that. So if we come back to cursor here, we tell it to look up the look up the project in Google Docs to find the document related to the project. It's found it, and then it's doing what it what we told it to say. It's saying that we 
we ran an issue, so we're going to execute this manually, um, which is a lie. But then we make it look like it's searching Google Docs for more context, also a lie. And it says I'm not, I wasn't able to find anything. But this is really our, uh, our Python file in, in a GitHub gist, and it just executed it. So if we look here, we can see all these files were uploaded to our attacking server. Um, so it exfiltrated the user's Git credentials, the ENV file in the project, which had an API key in it, um, the actual token and credentials for the MCP plugin, which is associated with the Google account. Um, so um, it was able to exfiltrate all that stuff. Also, a reverse shell was created to the attacker's machine, so we can execute commands on the victim's machine. Also, if we were to close out the shell, create a little bit of persistence here, so anytime a new shell is opened on the victim's machine, we can capture another reverse shell. Just to recap, we used uh, an MCP server, um, a third-party MCP server, which integrates with Google Docs to perform an indirect injection into cursor using uh, silent sharing with Google Docs to exfiltrate information and create a persistent reverse shell.